All right, video number three. Okay, so in the first video, established that Daniel talks about four beasts and then the end of the world comes. He lists the first three beasts, Babylon, Medes and Persians, and Greece. So by the time the New Testament comes along, there is another kingdom in place, and that's the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire has to be the fourth beast, the last beast, which has to be the Antichrist. Whoever the king of the fourth beast is has to be the Antichrist. Okay. And then, of course, Revelation 17 uh, confirms for us that there is a succession of kings and not one. Very important to understand. All right. Um, and the, re the reason I say that is because uh, you have to be able to combat this idea that there's going to be a future antichrist okay and it's interesting because all the descriptions of a future antichrist that you know that they'll say that he will be um uh, show himself that he is god right he, and he'll uh he will uh, sit in a temple of god and that he will you know um speak boastful words and that he'll be loved by the whole world all right so I mean, you've got Bible scripture to support that. But let's take a look at something here. In Isaiah 37, Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwell between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Okay. In case you missed it, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwells between the cherubims, thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Is that God? He sits between two cherubims. They call him Pope, which is Papa, which means Holy Father. Is that God? Or is that God? He sits between two cherubims. They call him the Holy Father or Pope, Papa, right? And of course, Jesus says, Call no man on earth your father, for you have one father in heaven. All right, so, uh, you know, think about this. Is this guy not exalting himself? Is it possible for anybody to exalt themselves even more than what this man does? All right, think about what it says in, uh, what is it, 2 Thessalon uh, Thessalonians, right? Who exalts and opposes all that, or how's that go? Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship? So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Is that God? All right. And so you think about this. And I mean, I don't know how anybody could possibly do anything to show themselves more exalted than what this guy does. I would like to see it. Just draw a picture of it or explain it in words or however you want to do it. I would like to hear a possible way for a man to exalt himself more than what this man right here does. He's got all the, you know, the Jewish customs on, the Jewish clothing, and uh, the robe and the big hat and whatever else. And he's got all this gold stuff here. This is probably all. Uh, very expensive stuff. I don't know what if it's made out of pure gold. I, I couldn't tell you. It's not plastic. I guarantee it. All right. So, uh, I mean, this guy exalts himself. He could, if he knew of a way to exalt himself even greater than what he does and demonstrate in front of people a more glorified existence, if he could imagine it, he would do it. But this is it because this, this is a direct. Uh, image of what we read here in Isaiah 37. 
O Lord of hosts, God of Israel that dwells between the cherubims. All right, now another thing the futurists will say is that, well, well, the whole world will love him. Well, let's see. The Roman Catholic Church claims over 2 billion people. 2 billion people out of 7 billion. By far the largest religion in the world and none are even close, not even Islam, not even close. Now, claiming Roman Catholicism is Christianity is like claiming Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness is Christianity. Uh, these are not even close to the same. Uh, what Roman Catholicism does is try to mimic the Christian religion, and they do it better than anybody else, and they're able to deceive better than anybody else which is why you read in Matthew 24 when G when uh, the disciples come to Jesus and say what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world the first thing Jesus says is take heed that no man deceives you now we read in Revelation 17 about mystery Babylon right so it doesn't say uh, it doesn't say Babylon the Great. It says Mystery Babylon. Why does it say Mystery Babylon? Because there will be a mystery. Um, people will wonder after, you know, just like it says, wonder after the beast. And, and I wondered with great admiration right here in verse 6. Now, this word mystery is, is uh, very interesting because we get a clue in Isaiah 14 about who this fourth beast is. You'll notice that the word Lucifer is mentioned just the one time in the Bible. And that's in, in Isaiah 14, verse 12. And it is a proverb concerning, or I should say, against right against the king of babylon all right so right here verse 12 is is uh the proverb verse 4 is explaining that this is a proverb against the king of babylon the king of babylon was the first beast of daniel and the second beast was the medes and the persians the third beast was greece and the fourth beast is the roman empire so when we read in revelation 17 mystery babylon the great this is a indication that this stems from a lineage of you, if you will, of beast. All right. And this word Lucifer is a Latin word. All right. This is a clue for who the mystery Babylon the Great is. And it's interesting uh, because there is only one language in the entire world that speaks Latin as its native tongue. And can you guess what country that is? That's right, Vatican City. The only country in the entire world that speaks Latin as its native tongue. So the Bible has given us a clue for who mystery Babylon the Great is. It's the Roman Catholic Church. You should have known that. And, of course, you've heard people say, well, he's going to be loved by the entire world. Right? The whole world's going to love him. Well, if you're expecting Fox News and CNN to broadcast, hey, the Antichrist is here, you can forget about it. Because if everybody knew that he was the Antichrist, he would not have the power that he has. But you say, well, he's going to be loved and cherished by the entire world. Well, you're right. He is loved and cherished by the entire world. You're just missing it. 